It's 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, which means it's time for BCTV's weekly media roundup 5.45 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, joined at the desk by often BUHS TV anchor Adam Hinckley. Adam, thanks for joining me here on 5.45 Live. You've been uh, doing some behind the scenes work for us here on 5.45 Live, but I've been roped into being on screen with me as well. Appreciate uh, getting to sit up here at the desk with you. Uh, maybe we'll even throw in some... Uh, summer camp flashback footage at the end of this here to get to see your on-screen work as the star of uh, Dash, BCTV's 2012, I want to say, summer camp video spectacular. Though uh, I should say we're not, I think, reprising your role as Dash Riprock today, but... We'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> and I think Dash was 2011, actually. Ah, gotcha. There we go. Anyway, that aside, uh, maybe I'll turn it over to you to find out what's on deck tonight here. <clears throat> Tonight, we'll break down the Harris Hill happenings, the latest school budget reports as town meeting day inches closer. Plus, we'll take you back to Wednesday night's six-hour homelessness marathon at First Baptist Church and much more. All that in 15 minutes or less. So if you've got the time and the attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this February 21st, 2014 edition of 545 Live. Ron Boyd and Adam Hinckley, we're joining you here from BCTV's downtown studios as the sun sets behind us here on a rainy Friday edition of 545 Live. That's footage of uh, Dover resident Kelly Clark's bronze medal winning run during the women's half pipe in Sochi, earning Clark uh, another notable trip to the Winter Olympics this year, something that the students of Landmark College's broadcast journalism class had their eye on this January winter J term as they wrote, produced, and directed six news programs all in just three weeks under the title of Landmark Broadcasters. The best winter athletes from around the world will come together to compete in the 2014 Winter Olympics, held between February 7th to the 23rd. The games occur every four years and there will be in the bitter cold snow covered Sochi, Russia. Speaking of winter sports, this year's 92nd annual Harris Hill Ski Jump event garnered BCTV plenty of footage with multi camera coverage during the two days of competitions this past weekend, including GoPro camera perspectives from the helmets of jumpers as they took the hill to the hill, aerial footage of the jump as conditions were met prior to competition, plus some inside access close ups from volunteer. Russ Grabiak, who gathered some clips amidst the competition sensations from Slovenia. It's an exciting weekend, and you know, of course, all eyes are going to be on Chris Lamb to see if he does now, retire. Now, here we go. Uh, You're defending the Harris from Hill last year in Brattleboro. Um, so I think that's added to the record, record to see if Mr. That, that Christopher would be a Lamb. Moment for us. Um, I'm not sure if Harris uh, wants to think about the, um, the cost of replacing do. another trophy, nice but even she's excited because, you know what, it's time. It's time, for it. it's time for it to go home. Beautiful looking so ride for him. We'll start Ask our that old Just a small sampling of the hours of footage gathered at the two days of competition at this uh, past weekend's Harris Hill Ski Jump festivities. You can also get the full results from uh, all of the various competitions there. We'll post those on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash bctv.brattleboro, uh, or you can head to the source at harrishillskijump, all one word, dot com. 
and get uh, all the results there. Plus, check out some more of that video. We'll also be showing it this coming week on BCTV Channel 8. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on here. And for that, uh, back into the stories we go. This week, Brattleboro Community Radio and BCTV joined forces with National Dish TV Channel Independence Free Speech TV to produce and broadcast a six-hour live event from the Main Street steps of First Baptist Church as the 16th Annual Homelessness Marathon came to Brattleboro, Vermont, featuring host Jeremy Alderson as he took to the airwaves for another year of radio and television coverage, shining the spotlight on the ever-present issues surrounding homelessness in America. Hi everybody, I'm nobody, and welcome to the 16th Annual Homelessness Marathon. This is the night when we talk about homelessness and we talk about the trials and tribulations that homeless people face. We talk about what we're going to do in America to address this problem. We're going to talk about a lot of things, and usually what we talk about on this show, you don't hear talked about anyplace else. Just a few minutes of these six hours of uh, coverage from this past Wednesday's Homelessness Marathon, uh, broadcast live from the First Baptist Church um, between the hours of 7 p.m. and 1 a.m. Uh, thanks to all the hardworking BCTV volunteers who uh, braved the cold to gather footage and get camera angles, and of course, to hardworking uh, BCTV volunteer Frederick Noyce, who was at the helm of this, producing, directing, putting all the technical elements together. And uh, you may remember Frederick Adam as the uh, director and summer camp guru master who uh, helped put together uh, DASH, our 2011 summer camp experience. Uh, I'll uh, just maybe keep bringing DASH up a little bit so that we can get a little footage of you in action as DASH Rip Rock during our end credits roll. In the meantime, we'll move on in the stories here, and uh, for that, uh, I'm going to, I believe, turn it back over your way. Next up, with less than 1% of Brattleboro's eligible voting population turning up this month to discuss Brattleboro's, dis that Brattleboro's District 6 budget proposal, which in spite of marginal increases from the previous year, managed to come in at around $27 million. Voters in towns under the Leland and Gray Middle and High School jurisdiction made their presence felt voting down the proposed Leland and Gray budget, prompting these comments from Superintendent Stephen John at the board's follow-up meeting following a less than favorable day of voting, at least where the school's administration is concerned. I'm certainly going to recommend that we try to get a vote before uh, we're obliged legally to issue contracts for employment, which is April 15th. Now, of course, if we vote on the second, and uh, we would not want to issue, I would not be able to issue contracts really until uh, the 30-day time passed for another petition. You can see that full uh, Leland and Gray uh, school board follow-up meeting following a uh, town-wide vote that turned down their budget. You can also see a full uh, special on the budget, which happened earlier in the week, though. Some of the details, I'm sure, will shift as they have to now present uh, a new budget to voters. It's all at brettlebrotv.org under the Leland and Gray heading. You can also see that full BUHS annual meeting we alluded to where their $27 million budget was passed as well. And with annual school board budget meetings coming going, we still inch ever closer to 2014's Town Meeting Day, as BCTV prepares to deliver seven cameras and seven crews to every one of the seven surrounding towns we serve, including Vernon, Guilford, Demerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica, as BCTV content manager Jeff M. prepares to pack seven day-long Town Meeting videos onto Channel 10 in the coming week. For more, we'll flip back to last year's epic coverage of the Town Meeting's festivities in all seven districts. Moderation is a lot like medicine. In addition to being election day, March 5th was of course town meeting day. It is not an exact science. With news like Guilford's decision to disband their middle school. Because this is such a touchy issue, I'm going to give facts. And Putney's move to adopt a full-time law enforcement officer. The first three years were paid for on a federal grant. The current year, the Putney paid the, the match amount. Joining visits from Governor Shumlin and all sorts of other Wyndham County legislators in the headlines. Are we smart, considering Vermont Yankee, in taking a state that's cheap to litigate, that has to repay legal expenses, and that has already made the decision on this question? And speaking of town meeting, 
A representative town meeting may carry a, a different feel for residents in Brattleboro, but a series of uncontested races continue to leave townwide districts without reps come Brattleboro's own Saturday government gathering later in the month of March. Among the seats left uncontested, all three of the open select board seats, whose current position holders on the board, John Allen, Donna McEmber, and David Scholes, all plan on returning to their current seats following an oppositionless race this spring. Nevertheless, all three of the soon-to-be winners joined the League of Women Voters Southeastern Unit Chair Janet Kramer in BCTV's downtown studios this past week for the customary election season programming, Candidate Conversations. I'd love to know what inspired the three of you to run for and serve in public office? <laughs> uh, I had a weak moment. <laughs> I had a very... No, I, it's, I think I said when I was mm -hmm. running in 2008, um, you know, you, you look at the TV, you watch BCTV, and, uh, and you sit back, and my wife would go, why, why do you... And I would watch the select board meetings and get all upset and uh, throw things at the TV and... She goes, well, then just run. I'm passionate about this community. I think it's a very unique community. I also really like to challenge myself to learn. I hadn't heard much conversation about looking for additional revenues, new sources of revenues, or actually looking differently at the, the way we value our services. So it just seemed like it was a, a possibility. All right, that does it for another edition of 545 Live. Thanks for joining us on a rainy Friday here. We'll let you get out there and enjoy the weekend. Adam, thanks for joining me here at the desk. I've done an excellent job here for being thrown into the driver's seat in the last minute. Sure appreciate your company here as we break down all these stories. We will be back next Friday at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8 for a whole other episode of 5.45 Live where we'll yet again take a look at area headlines, look at past events, sum up upcoming events, and much more. Plus, we'll have another uh, interactive calendar video series upload this coming Thursday as well at youtube.com slash brettlebrotv and brettlebrotv.org. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Five forty five live, okay. Da -na 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 -na. mess that one up. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Sweet. Heck yeah. Nice. Yep. So sad that I have to send it to myself <laughs> and then back to me. <laughs> you should just hire an unpaid intern. That's <laughs> perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can stomach doing that again. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Thank you.